Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Press the Action Button Podcast here on digital com. It is E3, and as always, as customary with E3, I have my good friend Eric here with me. Say hello. How's it going? And we're going to wrap uh, up E3 in the big press conferences, and boy, is there a lot to wrap up. I watched everything except for the PC conference, which was two and a half hours, and evidently it sucked. Yeah, I couldn't have cared less about that. I, not my, Not my thing. Yeah, I, I enjoy PC gaming, but I'm usually more of a console gamer. And don't get me started on the stupid fucking console wars where the PC gamers act like they're better than con- people who play video games on consoles. Oh, God, Because yeah. they don't realize that there's advantages to playing on a fucking console. You know, I don't even... I, I use a MacBook because, um, you know, editing photos and everything. So I use a Mac. I don't even have a PC, and I don't even fucking care to have one. I... I, I remember I had one back in the day, and just trying to play a game on it was a nightmare. So I've always been a console guy, and I always will be. That's not going to change. Yeah, okay. What do you want to do first? Do you want to do them in the order that they happened, or do you want to do the big three and then do the others? I would say do the big three. Okay. In that case, uh, let's start off with Microsoft. I First off, I think this was... Microsoft's best show since before they showed the Kinect as Project Natal all those years ago. It was it was a really good conference. I have a major problem with it, but yet yeah, this was what they needed to do. They didn't mention the Kinect one single time. They didn't mention TV. They didn't mention Last FM or the NFL or anything else that gamers there are not going to give a fuck about. Yeah, no, I mean, Kinect is dead. They realize, you know, the TV the TV thing works. There's really not much else to talk about on it. I mean, they covered pretty much what it does. You know, you connect your cable box to the, your Xbox, and hey, it works. So I don't really, you know, luckily they, they didn't have to tell us that twice. I mean, yeah. this year they focused on games, which is exactly what they should have, and I thought it was a great conference. I mean, the you know, the big thing of announcing backwards compatibility that's going to be... You know, right now there's a few games, and then in the fall it's going to expand considerably. I think that's huge. Yeah, and Sony needs to take note and do this. Yeah, I, I was reading a lot of things where they said, you know, this is a this is a big move by Microsoft, and now everyone's going to kind of look towards Sony and say, hey, you know, people want this. This has been something that you know I wanted. I have both, and. I've, I'm extremely happy that they're doing backwards compatibility for the Xbox One. Yeah, uh, Sony would come out and steal their thunder, but we'll get to that next. We've got to talk about Microsoft. Um, Microsoft, they had a great show. My one problem with this show is that they showed, what, like 18 games or something? Yeah, something like that. And probably 12 of those games they had no gameplay for. That kind of irked me. Yeah, I... I kind of I remember before E three started, I was wondering if this was going to be one of those years. You know how it kind of goes every couple of years, where you get that one year that most of the stuff is just big CG trailers for like, hey, we're announcing this game. You know, next year we're going to show gameplay. Yeah, and I wanted to see gameplay on Recore because that was a cool trailer. You know? Yeah, I that I was um I'm a I'm a massive Gears of War fan, so I was. And they, I know they had said like, "Hey, we're gonna do one," you know, a long time ago for the Xbox. So I'm waiting, and then, and then it was a trailer, and it's like, "Oh well, it's coming out holiday of 2016." I was like, "You know, I was hoping for a little bit more of it." Yeah, they did show a little bit of gameplay though in that. Yeah, one, but so. you have to wonder if that was like really the game, you know? Yeah, you do. Was is it just me or did the? Uh two characters in the supposed gameplay of Gears of War look a little bit skinnier and a little bit less bulky than we're usually used to seeing from that series. Yeah, I, I agree. I think they're going to change it up pretty good. You know, they, they want to distance themselves from a, you know, what cl- uh, the hell's that guy's name? The Cliff or something. Cliffy. Cliffy, Cliffy B. B. Yeah, hilarious little fucking dirt tiered. I think they want to distance themselves a little bit from what he did, which is a good idea, but still keep yeah. like, the core gameplay intact. Yeah, and uh, that, that I don't even know why I noticed that. I just I was like, are those characters skinnier than they used to be? 
So kind of fu a funny thing to notice, but yeah, backwards compatibility was huge. I love that they're adding that into the Xbox One. It sounds like they're going to implement it slowly over time. So it sounds to me like they're going to gradually make more and more games available for that's, purchase on. That's what um, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, they're they're just going to be up updating and updating. You know, adding you know more and more and more. And eventually you'll be able to stick your Xbox 360 game into the Xbox One and it'll go, hey, you own this game. You get a free download. Right, which is awesome. I mean, that's that's huge. No matter how, that's, that's absolutely huge. Yeah. The one thing that I worry about with doing that is I have a lot of Xbox 360 games. I think everybody has a lot of Xbox 360 games. So if I, I put them all on my hard drive, that's going to eat up space real fucking quick. You know? Yeah. I know one thing, you know, with both systems, you know, the Sony and the Xbox, the hard drives on them, you know, on these consoles leave a lot to be desired. I mean, you know, using the external hard drives is pretty they, much a necessity. They're both better, in a better position with that kind of shit than the Wii U is. Well, yeah, I mean, what I do is, gig. Like, you know, I if I play a game, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll delete it off my console, you know, all my saves are on there and then it does really it takes no time to load the fucker back on so you know if I want to get back on a game but that's kind of how I just free up space yeah let's see what what else did they show Recore looked cool Gears of War looked cool they showed yeah. Halo Halo looks I'm not gonna I'm, um last Halo game sucked I thought Halo, it was Halo 4 yeah Halo 4 was not good it yeah. kind of even went no fanfare but Halo 5 looks fucking incredible yeah I have not played Halo 4. I haven't played the series past Reach, um, so I can't say if Halo 4 sucked or not. But Reach I, was a, go ahead. I was impressed with the gun sounds in this Halo gameplay that they showed. Yeah. The, the gun sounds beefy, a lot beefier than the older Halo games, and I like that because it will make them feel more powerful when you fire them and be more fun to fire because of that. It looks, it looks great. I mean, I, I'm, ex I'm really excited for it. You know, it looks different enough and innovative to where it's not, you know, the exact same thing. I think they kind of learned with putting Halo 4 out that it was, you know, they tried to, you know, the different plan or whatever. It just, I don't know. It just did not work. Yeah, I like this having two characters thing because that yeah. gives me the idea that there will be couch co-op in it, like split screen co-op. Yeah, right. And I love split screen co-op. Oh, man, that's so old school. I love it. And I hope to God they put that in the game. Um, let's see, what else did they show? Uh, I thought uh, Forza, uh, the new Forza looked great. Yeah, they, they brought out a... Uh, tr uh, what was it? A GT? A Ford GT? Yeah. And that car... I'd fuck that car. <laughs> that thing was so sexy. <laughs> I'm joking, but yeah, that car was awesome. Uh, but yeah, the... Get they didn't show any gameplay for that one, but it was a pretty trailer, that's for sure. Um, oh, one thing they announced that was really, really cool. What's up, man? <laughs> okay, uh, am I recording? Uh, um, what was the last thing you heard me say? We were talking about the car they brought out for uh, yeah. Forza. That was a Ford GT, right? Yeah, I'm, that, I'm pretty sure it was. That was one sexy looking car, I loved it. And the uh, trailer was really, really pretty and cool. And I liked that, too. Oh, one other thing I absolutely love that they did was the Rare Collection. Yeah, that's... Oh, man, that's really cool. Like, Rare has so many games going from the Nintendo 64, which th there's some Nintendo 64 games and other stuff that they can't get back because they're Nintendo yeah. property. But... There's a whole whole slew of other games that they did that are just phenomenal back then that I am would love to have in one big ass collection, you know? Oh yeah, no, I think that's great. So I'm definitely down for that, definitely excited for that. I thought the um was it that the indie game Tacoma that was from the guys who did Gone Home, which was um I can't remember the developer, Fulbright maybe, was that it? That sounds right. Yeah, they did Gone Home, which was, you know, really awesome. And Tacoma looked really cool. I mean, you know, Xbox supporting indies is really good to see. You know what I was happy to see, just because it's a change from the norm for them? They didn't show Call of Duty. They didn't begin or end with Call of Duty. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah. No, I, I agree. I and this is someone I I bought that last.